good day everyone wherever and whatever time you are listening to us thank you all of you for joining us for this orientation here we are going to discuss about aca icaaw advanced level we are having an orientation for july 2024 exams basically as we know it's about second half of march and we are close towards july 2024 exam so we are having our orientation for july 2024 i welcome all of you on behalf of accountancy and finance training center aftc here are the contents that we are going to discuss basically first of all uh, we will discuss the no pass no fee model for example if you study with us then there are two types of session first of all we have a regular session and next is basically no pass no fee model we will discuss both of these like what are their details and how you can opt for them why icaaw why you should choose icaaw aca if you are having a academic qualification or a certain professional qualification then why you need to go for aca icaw then we will talk about our portfolio what is our portfolio what do you mean by portfolio and how you can use them then we will talk about our services what services we are going to offer to you people to students to professional to various people what services we are going to offer them basically so we will discuss it too moving forward we will also talk about the qualification structure because i received lot of queries about the qualification like how many exams are there how many exams do i need to attempt so which exams are there either reporting audit tech so we will discuss all of them in detail in today's session we will discuss all of them in detail and at the end of the session i will be taking up a question and answer session once this orientation is complete then i will be taking question from all of you and will be responding you so please hold your question or you can send me your questions in chat box once this is done then we can go for it next we will talk about the exam structure exam structure means how many questions you will be having in your exams and how many marks what is the distribution each and everything will be discussed then we will talk about how we will study basically qualification structure exam structure and how we are going to help you people how we will support you people basically this is basically about how we are going to study what resources would be available like for example online learning materials study notes lms whatever we have we will discuss in detail then at the end as i already mentioned we will be having a question and answer session basically so i will be replying to questions of all of you so these are the contents of our today's orientation apart from that if there will be any other thing then we can add up in our session as well before we formally start our today's point first of all let me introduce myself i am noman yakat aca icaaw member and i am a member basically from 2017 i qualified my exams in 2016 and in 2017 i became a member of aca icaaw i have more than 8 to 9 years of teaching experience to different qualification academic as well as professional qualifications as well i have more than 6 years of industry experience as well working at different positions in accounting finance audit taxation i am also a fellow member of acc i am working at different online forums and approved learning partners of acc icaaw cma and many other qualifications as well previously i also served as a university lecturer at one of the prestigious university in my country as well i am also an associate member of pakistan institute of public finance accountant apart from that i am also a registered mentor at oxford books university united kingdom registered mentor basically last but not the least I also hold business finance professional certification from United Kingdom as well. So this is basically a brief overview, brief introduction about myself. Because sometimes students are worried about 
for example, if they are studying from a particular teacher or a tutor or an institute, then what will be the qualification of that person basically? So you don't need to worry about that because I'm also an ACA ICAW member and I got my membership by passing my exams. As we know now, nowadays we also talk about ICAW pathway exam, pathway membership. I obtained my membership by passing my advanced level exams. So you don't need to worry about anything. Hopefully, inshallah, you will be in safe hands as well. Now, moving to the next slide. First of all, uh, we will discuss about no pass, no fee model. Basically. What is no pass, no fee model? Before we talk about no pass, no fee model, we will discuss about regular study or regular batch. Re what is regular study? What is regular batch? Regular study means uh, you will be enrolled, you will be entitled to a lot of resources and you will study like a student as well. But if unfortunately you are failed, then definitely when you will be studying the next time, then you have to pay some amount of the fee. This is basically called as regular study as a part of normal student. But what is no pass, no fee model? No pass, no fee model is basically if a student does not pass, then there would be no tuition fee. If you are studying under no pass, no fee model, and if you comply, if you comply, if you comply with our terms and conditions, then you are going to pass out your exam. But let's say if you are not going to pass out your exam, then definitely what we are going to do in next time, in next time, we will not charge you a single penny. There will be no tuition fee as well. So that is basically no pass, no fee model. In fact, no pass, no fee model, we are providing you a assurance. Like you are going to pass out your exam. If you will not pass out, then in next time, unlike other tuition providers, you will not pay a single penny to us basically. Because in no pass, no fee model, you have already paid a different structure as well. So that is basically no pass, no fee model. Basically what we are offering, at our ICAW advanced level. What I believe that there will be very less people, very, very few people that they will be offering the no pass, no fee model or pass assurance as well. Now we will talk about why you should opt for the ICAW as well, basically. If you are holding a certain academic or professional qualification, then why you should hold the ICAW? Well, you will add up ICAW, then definitely it will be a top up of your qualification. Let's say if you are a member of ACCA, Association of Chartered Certified Accountants, if you are a member of Institute of Cost and Management Accountant, if you are a member of CMA, Certified Management Accountant, or any other body in the world, if you add up ACA, ICAW, then you can top up your qualification. Top up means you can enhance your qualification basically. ACA is basically a global qualification, global recognition. So definitely when something is globally recognized, then its importance, its weighting is increased automatically. It is among the leading accounting bodies of the world. For most of the years, ACA ICW was on the top of the qualification. One of the top qualification in the world was basically the ACA ICAW. So you people can imagine if you people will hold the ACA ICAW, then definitely there will be a lot of impact on your career, on your profile, and you can easily grow up as well. When something is globally recognized, it gives you a higher advantage, then definitely there will be higher financial rewards as well. Higher financial reward, you can work at better remuneration, you can start up your own business, you can work at top position. If you will look at the FTSC companies, FTSC companies. So top 100 companies, their CFOs, their finance sector are basically holding the EC, ICAW qualification as well. So all of these areas, all of these qualification structure will give you a diversified scope. So diversified scope, high recognition, financial reward, 
top position all of these things will make you much more successful will give you much more success in your life this is not what i am saying you can easily search out on google as well you can talk about you can search about the finance sector the cfo companies of middle east europe canada and many other countries and you will find out that most of them basically belongs with the aca icaw as well basically so it can give you a huge huge advantage in your life in your career what is our portfolio portfolio mean what we are going to offer we are having our classes we are providing the qualification live session for ACA, icaw cma certified management accountant usa cfa certified financial analyst usa acca foundation in accountancy fia bsc honors in applied accounting as well and many other areas what we are offering basically we are also having some sport mentoring for aca icaaw pathway as well we are providing mentoring for icaw pathways as well basically so that is basically our qualification that is basically our portfolio because we are a group of people we are a team of professional who hold basically both academic experience as well as the industry experience when you study from a person who has both industry experience as well as academic experience then it means you can bridge that gap as well because if you just know uh, what is mentioned in the book that is fine that makes sense but if you know something that is practical how to do something practically in your practical life either you are associated with a firm or with an industry as well then definitely it gives you a huge amount of advantage as well. so this is something that is beneficial for you people because we are having a team and you will study from expert tutors as well and we have different tutors working for different qualifications and different subjects as well basically as i am associated with acicaw and now we are having our orientation so i am just giving you my orientation for aca exams what are our services what services we are offering we are offering our live online session like we are having a live orientation live session so we will be offering you our live sessions as well apart from that in addition to we are also offering recorded sessions as well for example if you are unable to attend the live session there is no need to worry you can get our recordings as well because we have our lms lms what does that mean lms means learning management system learning management system we will give you a login we will give you a specific login a website link on our website you can log in you can register for a particular course and then definitely you can enjoy you can watch your recorded session you can live attend your live session you can ask you can send us your queries through email through whatsapp through call through many other sources as well we also offer our group sessions as well it is not like for example if i am speaking then only i will be speaking no when we will be when we will be having a session when we will be having our class then what i believe that is group session this session should be interactive i believe in interactive sessions as well what do you mean by interactive session let's suppose we are 10 people in this orientation let's please so we will be talking about we will be discussing for example i will be asking a question from student a b c or they can ask question from me so we will be enjoying the discussion of many people as well so we can discuss either something is right something is wrong or how we can improve something as well so that gives you some sort of advantage that is particularly beneficial because it makes your concepts more clear because when you learn from your students when you learn from your colleagues from professional when you heard about the opinion of other people how they think about a particular event or a particular activity as well so we believe in group sessions as well and all of these sessions are basically the interactive session apart from that we also offer one to one session what do you mean by one to one session for example 
if some of you want to study individually, like you need a private tuition, then we can also go for one-to-one -one session as well. And different students, according to their different needs, their appetite, they can opt for different areas as well. Either you opt for a live session or any other thing, we will provide you the recording. But we strongly believe you people should also join the live session to enjoy the discussion, to enjoy the interaction with your colleague, and that will be huge beneficial for you people as well. Qualification structure. If we talk about the qualification structure of ACA ICLW, basically ACA is divided in three levels. First of all, we have certificate level. Second, we have professional level. And third, we have advanced level as well. Basically. There are six exams, six exams in certificate level, six exams in professional level and three exams in advanced level as well. In total, there are 15 exams, six exams in certificate level, six exams in professional level and three exams in our advanced level as well. Because this orientation is specifically focusing on the advanced level, so we will not be talking about the certificate level or professional level at this point. We can have a separate discussion. We will be having a separate orientation for our certificate and professional level. Now we will be just focusing on advanced level as well. In advanced level, we have three exams. First of all, we have corporate reporting. Second exam is basically about strategic business management, SBM. And third and final exam, that is basically about the case study. So we have three exams, corporate reporting or CR, strategic business management or SBM, and finally case study or CS basically. So we have these three exams. In our next slide, we will be talking individually. What is corporate reporting? What is the syllabus? What is qualification structure, exam structure? Same thing for SBM and case study as well. Apart from that, why we have added this column? We have added this column to advise you people because sometimes students are confused. Either they have to opt for three exams or two exams or which of the exams should be attempted earlier. So we are going to advise you people according to your time, according to your job, training, qualification structure, background knowledge. So what would be the best combination for your exam? What paper you should opt for? Either one exam, two exam, three exam, or which of the two exams you should opt earlier. So we are going to advise you people. We will further advise you how you have to study basically, how you should start studying, so we can also help you out in preparing a schedule. Preparing a schedule. And this schedule would be at individual level. So we can help all of you individually. We will discuss how you have to prepare a schedule in next session. You will prepare a schedule. We will discuss if it will require any amendments, then definitely we can go for that. So we will advise you you people how you can offer that and this advice would be free of cost there would be no charges for that either you are our student or not so we can help out you people now let's talk about the first advanced level exam that is basically the corporate reporting or cr basically if i talk about the corporate reporting then corporate reporting we have three major sections first of all we have the reporting side and this reporting constitute approximately 55 to 65% of your sample. So 55 to 65% you have to study your reporting. In reporting, we will talk about both IES International Accounting Standards as well as IEFRS International Financial Reporting Standards as well. So which IES and IEFRS we have to study, we will discuss in our very first class. Next or second subject that is basically about audit and assurance as well. This audit and assurance is basically the advance at advanced level. So advanced auditing and assurance concept we are going to study in our corporate reporting and it constitutes approximately 30 to 40 percent of your exam, 30 to 40 percent of your syllabus of 
corporate. Again, in audit insurance, we will talk about IASB framework, the different ISAs, and many other auditing standards, review standards, and so on. Third area that is a very small area, but you cannot deny its importance because ethics are very, very important. ICW plays a very, very important on the role of ethics, basically. So this ethics is approximately about 5 to 10%. So do not assume it is just for 5-10%. It creates a huge impact on your exam. Because if you do not know about the ethic, if you are not an ethical person, then unfortunately, you are not contributing something towards your society. You are just getting some financial benefits for you, for your family, or anyone else. But you are not contributing something towards the society. So it is very much important that you also go for you also recognize the impact of ethics in your real exam as well. And don't look at the marks. Either you have 5 or 7 marks or 10 marks. Its impact is very, very significant. After the syllabus, if I talk about the exam structure. So what is the exam structure basically? In corporate reporting, we will be having a three exam questions. First of all, question number one. Then we have question number two, and then we have question number three as well, basically. So we will be having the three questions in our corporate reporting exam. Question one will be a proxy for 40 marks, approximately 40 marks. It could be increased to 30, increased to 42, or decreased to 38 as well. But approximately 40 marks for question one, 30 marks for question two, and 30 marks for question three as well. Question one will belongs with your data analytics basically. So what is data analytics? Data analytics is basically the software that is being introduced by ICAW. You have to analyze the data. And according to your analysis, you have to make comments. You have to provide the feedback. Then we also have the concept of advanced information. It is released approximately six weeks before exam. Six weeks before exam, advanced information will be released. You have to analyze the advanced information, prepare your own notes. Then you have to compare the advanced information, what you have, what was released six weeks ago, and what information you have in your real exam. You have to compare and then you have to respond according to the requirements of examiner as well. Last section is basically about reporting and audit. Yes, there will be question there will be some requirements and sub requirements from reporting and audit side as well question two and question three it does not involve data analytics it does not involve any concept of advanced information simply it involves the reporting side it involves your auditing concepts and it involves your ethics as well basically so in question two and three, you will be having the question of reporting, audit, ethics, or it could be a major portion of audit and a small portion of reporting, or vice versa, a major portion of reporting and a small portion of audit and ethics as well. It's fine. It could be anything. But we have to prepare. We study whole of the syllabus. Anything could be examined, and we have to prepare for each and everything as well. Basically. Now talking about the second exam. This second exam is basically about strategic business management or SBM. Strategic business management or SBM. In SBM, we have five different syllabus areas. In corporate reporting, we were having three syllabus areas, reporting, assurance, and ethics. But in SBM, we have five major areas. First of all, we have business analysis. And this business analysis constitute approximately 30 to 40 percent of your syllabus is basically business analysis. Second major area that is basically about FINA, it constitute approximately 25 to 35 percent. So if I talk about then roughly around 70 to 75 percent of your syllabus of SBM belongs with two characters, business analysis, and final. 
Third, it is basically about the corporate reporting. Yes, it is the same corporate reporting that you will be studying in the first exam of ICWCR. 15 to 20%. Fourth, assurance. Again, same thing, audit and assurance that we were talking about in corporate reporting in our previous slide, approximately the 10%. Last but not the least, that is the topic five, area five, that is basically about the ethics. Again, approximately 5% of your exam will belong with your ethics concept as well. If I talk about the corporate reporting, assurance, and ethics, then these of them, three, four, and five, all of them are same as we were talking about in your corporate report. So that's why we advise students, if you are appearing in July, and if you have some time, then you should appear, you should prepare for both of these exams, corporate reporting and SPF. You know, approximately 30 to 35 percent of your syllabus areas 30 to 35 percent of your syllabus areas of sbm correlates with your corporate report so if you are studying the corporate reporting it means you are also contributing towards your sbm exam as well so that is what we normally suggest but definitely everyone has its own circumstances condition so that's why we mentioned earlier on our previous slide that we are available for discussion. We are here to advise you people which exams you should opt, which exam you should appear, and then we can go for that. If I talk about the exam structure, the paper structure, how SBM will be examined in your real exam. So there are two questions, question number one and question number two as well. Question number one, approximately 55 to 60 marks while question two will be for 35 to 45 In question one, we will be having a major portion of business analysis and finance as well. Apart from that, there could be a small area from the costing side as well. While in question two, we will be having the same thing, business analysis, finance, but there will be a section on reporting and audit as well. Again, the reporting and audit is basically the same thing as we were talking about in our corporate reporting exam. Corporate reporting. While ethics, these ethics could be examined in question one, these could be examined in question two, or these could be examined in any of them, or these could be examined in both of these questions as well. That's for sure there will be an ethics question. There will be an ethics requirement. Either it is an open requirement or it might be as a part of a hidden requirement as well. And then you have to study carefully. You have to analyze. Do you have to pick up the right requirement and then answer? This is what basically what we have showed some sort of a comparison. You see, this area is basically the overlapping area overlapping areas we were talking about 30 to 35 percent of corporate reporting in sbm also correlates with each other in your self section this this is basically now the last exam of icw is basically the case study exam what is case study case study is basically a report writing exam as well you have to write a report this exam of report writing is a skills-based exam. There is a no technical knowledge. What do you mean by no technical knowledge, skill-based exam? It means uh, we will not study, you, you will not study the IAS, IFRS, finance, audit, or any other thing like taxation or law. No technical knowledge, it is just basically a skill-based exam. Examiner will give you a business scenario, business situation, you have to analyze and then you have to move on. So for this skill-based exam, advanced information is released by examiner six weeks before exam. Roughly six weeks before exam, advanced information is released by ICAAW you have to study this advanced information and then you have to plan and then you have to move it out further on basically. As case study is a different exam, so we will be having a 
separate orientation for case study. We are just having an overview of case study in this orientation. After one or two weeks, we will be having a separate orientation for case study. In case study, we have three major requirements. Requirement one is basically about the financial analysis. You will be given some numbers. For example, if I talk about the revenue, let's suppose in 2022 and 2023. A revenue, let's suppose here, all figures are in pound. Here, revenue was 50,000 pound. And now your revenue is 62.5 thousand pound. Obviously, our revenue has increased by 12,500 pounds. So what are the major reasons? What are the different revenue streams that contributed towards the increase in revenue? So we will study that. We will study in detail. Next requirement, requirement two is basically about financial data analysis or it is called as FPA. When we are talking about revenue, so definitely there must be some sort of a data. Let's suppose this company was producing motor vehicles. This company was producing motor vehicles. This company was involved in the business of manufacturing of motor vehicles. So what we are going to do, we are going to look at the numbers of units sold, number of units manufactured, opening inventory. We have to analyze the data. We have to analyze the demand and so on. So make your number stock. That is financial data analysis. Then we will be having the business analysis as well. Business analysis being business situation, scenarios, strategic point of view, strategic analysis, operational issues, commercial issues, you have to study that. And finally, we will be having the executive summary, executive summary of all three requirements. All three requirements for executive summary. So at the end, you have to produce an executive summary that will be a summary of all of three requirements. Now, if we talk about some general reasons why students fail in ICAW exam, particularly at advanced level. If you are holding a professional qualification or a good academic qualification, then why students fail? First of all, the reason is lack of technical knowledge because students think either they have studied something, some standard in their previous qualification, so they know each and everything they do not need to study. No, this is not a case. For example, if you have studied something in your earlier exam, then why this body was introduced? So there is something different. So you need a higher amount of technical knowledge to make sure that you qualify your ACA advanced level exams. This is an, I also mentioned earlier, considering ACA and other qualifications same. So this is not a case. In ability to retain technical areas as well. Yes, because there is a technical knowledge and if you are unable to retain, then it is unlikely that you are going to pass out the exam. So there is a structure, there is a method how you can retain your technical aid gap. So in our sessions, we are going to provide you the tips. We are going to provide you the techniques, how you can retain your technical area, how you can remember your technical knowledge and how you should move on. Some other major reasons are with the vague writing expression because students do not care about the writing side. They just read out a question, assume a solution in their mind, and then they move on. No, this is not a case. Your writing plays a very, very important concern as well. So when you go for a complete writing practice, then definitely there will be a feedback from a tutor. Because if you do not receive a feedback from a tutor, then you do not know how much to write, what to write, what you should not write. Because these exams are time pressured exams. These involve skills, high level of skills, technical knowledge. So you have to be very, very accurate in your writing, making a good understanding, a solid understanding, a good background, comprehensive knowledge to make sure that you pass out these exams. Again, time management issues, if you do not go for practice, you will be facing a time management issues. 
but when you will go for practice, mock exam, revision session, discussion, then definitely these issues are going to be resolved. How we are going to study basically? So we are going to study with our live online and recorded session. As I told you earlier, we will be having the live session as well as we will provide you the recordings of those sessions as well basically for all of our courses, corporate reporting, SBM and case study. Then there will be class-based assignments and home-based assignments as well. Two types of assignments. Class-based assignments mean, for example, if we have studied a particular topic, let's suppose that is the disposal of consolidation section, then we will be taking up some questions in class. Let's suppose I have solved two questions. Now one or two questions will be solved by the different students as well, all of you. And then you will be talking about discussion. Because discussion plays a very, very important role. So you, you will learn from the discussion, from the point of view of other people. Comprehensive notes and revision notes. We will provide you the complete notes of your syllabus area. So you can study. You should not be worried about thousands of pages of your study materials. We will be going for evaluations and feedback on your assignments, on your past papers. on your mock exams, on your write-up sets. Because feedback evaluation is very, very important. So you will be learning about what issues are there, how you can resolve those issues, how you can move on. This is basically something that is very, very important. Evaluations and feedback on your these areas. Moving further, we will be talking about exam software and exam software practice. So we will be having a session because we know ICAW exams are being conducted on a particular software being launched by ACA ICAW. So we will be having a live session about exam software. What is the exam software? How you can use it? How you should practice? How you should write something? What are the shortcuts? What are the abbreviation? What are the different components of software? Each and everything will be discussed here. Question bank practice and past paper practice as well. Yes, we will be picking up the questions from past papers as well as the question bank to make sure you completely grasp your concepts basically. Sometimes people think like we will go for question bank or past papers once our syllabus will be completed. No. Once our some major topics will be completed, then we will move on to the question bank, past paper. Like for example, if you have studied the consolidation, we can jump on the consolidation question. So you will be learning what we studied in our session, either it is applicable in our real exam or not. IFRS 2, IFRS 9, IFRS 15, 16. After completion of a major topic, we will be moving on towards question bank and past paper. We will provide you the study material. Uh, sorry, this is just a typing mistake. That is 2024 study material. Do not use 2023 study material. Use 2024 study material. We will provide you the study material, notes, each and everything in stock form. If you require a hard copy, then it could be available. But for this, you have to build the charges as well. But 2024 study material, that is a Free of cost. Free of cost, we will provide you the latest study. And finally, we will be having a mock exam and feedback as well. Once our syllabus will be completed, then we will give you one or two weeks of time. You can analyze your syllabus, your weak areas, you can talk about your question. Then we will be having some sessions as well, revision sessions as well. In revision sessions, we will be taking up your question. Again, we will be revisiting your technical areas. After that, we will be having the mock exams as well. Approximately three to four mock exams. Three to four mock exams for every subject we will be conducting, providing you the feedback, and then moving forward. So there will be one mock exam in one week, and not more than that, to make sure that we completely understand your feedback to improve your mistakes. This is basically a sample of feedback, how we are going to provide you the feedback on your 
assignments, on your mock exam, on each and everything. This is basically a student due to confidentiality. I cannot disclose the name, but this is just basically an extract. Like for example, some technical grammatical issues, the controlling interest in Austrian will be 80% and non-controlling interest would be 20%. So at what date it is 80% and 20%? At what date? You have not mentioned the date. This is a technical issue. This is not a grammatical concern. This was basically a grammatical concern. This is a technical concern. We have not mentioned the date. When the control is achieved, when control is achieved, when control is achieved. Specific, you have to be specific in your exam. If you are talking something generally, examiner may not reward you, or examiner may give you the half of your mark. So please do not lose your mark as these small points are very, very important. Just listen from the words of a people, unfortunately, who was failed on 48 or 49. I wish I could have obtained the 50 marks, just one mark. It could make a difference between pass and fail. So these areas are very, very important. Again, acquisition, the following, what specific discussion? You have to mention the increase in fair value. What increase? If you believe fair value has increased, so how much fair value has increased? How much fair value has increased? You have to mention. Because if you are performing a certain calculation, then you must know about that figure. Intergroup loan or any other thing. So you have to be specific. We will advise you people how to produce a good write-up. How you can write up according to the examiner's guideline and how you can make sure that you can pass out your exam. We will provide you a lot of tips, techniques, exam strategies, exam areas, each and every. It's all from my side. Thank you all of you for joining me for this orientation and bearing me for a few minutes. These are basically our contract details. If you want to study with us, then you can study. Apart from this orientation, we will also provide you the sample lectures. Sample lectures. And notes. And these sample lectures and notes, as you know, these are free of cost. To obtain these sample lectures and notes, what you need to do? Just send us a message on this WhatsApp or send us an email on our business, or you can send up a message on our Facebook page. Also. But it's better to get a quick response, it's better to send us an email send us an email or send up a WhatsApp text and then one of our team members will respond you as early as possible. We'll share the sample lectures and notes and after taking up the sample lectures and notes, you can decide either you have to study with us, you have to study with your own or you have to study with another tuition provider as well. So this is basically about the facilities. This is basically about what we are offering. Apart from that, you can also uh, join us for our trial class. Our trial class will be on next Sunday as well. Let me check the date. Our trial class will be on 31st of March. 31st of March 2024, our trial class will be held and it will be at 2 p.m. Pakistan time. 2 p.m. Pakistan time for corporate reporting. And wait, let me mention here 2 p.m. Pakistan time for corporate reporting and 3 p.m. Pakistan time for our SPM as well. Apart from sample lectures, you can also join us for our trial sessions as well. These sessions are completely free of cost. Completely free of cost. So after taking up the sample lectures, after taking up these trial classes, you can decide either you have to opt, you have to study, what facilities will be there, how we are going to study, each and everything will be. So this is all from my side. Thank you very much for bearing me.
now i will be taking up the question from all of you if you people have any questions so please let me know i will be opening up the voice you can use your mic and then you can talk about all of these areas as well 